Hi, this is Real Verde Audio, and today this video is about understanding ports and uh, ports for loudspeakers, of course. And uh, I'm going to show you directly uh, what are the choices that loudspeaker manufacturers have to make and why, what are the benefits and the drawbacks of choosing specific frequencies for port tuning because uh, you would think that if we tune the port to a lower frequency then that loudspeaker will have lower extension for the bass right that's correct and uh, however the situation is not so easy not so simple and by changing the tuning frequency of the port uh, there are some things happening in the background which will be both beneficial and both uh, limiting at the same time and uh, and of course there are some factors like increasing the loudspeaker enclosure volume will give you a much better low frequency capability however increasing the volume is going to create a problem and uh, we are going to have a look at all of these provided we have enough time and uh, for this lesson i'm going to use the itec 515c woofer which is the uh, base driver it's a 16 inch driver that is used in the itec voice of the theater uh, loudspeakers not all of them but many of them use this all of the big ones like the uh, A1X, A2, A4 uh, use it, A5, A5 also uses other ones so you can have like a ton of different variation on of these uh, voice of the theater speakers but the big ones use the 515 series and of course depending on uh, the era they were made it, it might be the A, B, C, D or E or and so on versions of the driver so this lesson is about the 515c and uh, that's also because I am using this very same driver for my voice of Lancelot loudspeaker that I designed and I'm going to show you some considerations playing around with the port tuning frequency uh, where we can go with it what's why is it so that the voice of the theater speakers uh, go down to 50 hertz only and if you want to bring the frequency response of this driver lower than 50 hertz can you do it and how can you do it because when you look at it the self-resonant frequency of this driver is at 26 hertz so this truly means that it should be by any means an outstanding very low frequency driver that should have no problem at all going below 20 hertz so after all this introduction let's have a look at what what's happening so what i'm going to show you is a program called WinISD, and this is a free tool that anyone can download for free and have fun with it and basically what it does is that uh, you provide an enclosure so when you are going here for the box you provide the box that you have what is the volume in liters what what is the port tuning frequency and then you can play around uh, and uh, and see how your driver behaves in that cabinet of course when you create a new project it's going to ask you what sort of cabinet you are thinking about is it a sealed enclosure ported enclosure passive radiator and so on so there's lots of things uh, that you can uh, uh, fool around with this program but what it will give you is it will give you for one thing a prediction for sound pressure levels at diverse frequencies it also allows you to add the uh, crossover so basically here I have chosen a second order crossover cut at 500 Hertz which is like a pretty standard for this driver 
this is something very close to what is used in the Altec A5 and, and many of the voice of the theater speakers second order low pass at 500 hertz so then it will give us a frequency response that that's already that starts to decline a little bit at 300 hertz but around 500 hertz it's what we say like 3 db down compared to not happening i mean compared to not adding the filter and then it just drops uh, 12 db per octave and then what we have here is that you see there is a blip and and the blip is there at 50 hertz basically and that's because of the tuning frequency of the port so the port is tuned to 50 hertz and that will add us a, a quite significant boost uh, around uh, 50 hertz uh, slightly above 50 hertz basically between 50 and 60 hertz and that's going to give us basically the highest SPL between 50 and 60 hertz and that really is part of uh, why that Altec A5 sounds so good because it has a very strong mid bass however it doesn't sound at all like this in real life that there is nothing no top end and then you have like a lower mid range upper bass and then a huge blip in the mid bass because this part is filled out by the front horn of the loudspeaker and then from here on the compression driver takes up so basically the levels are staying high 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 but there is this constraint and this is what uh, people complain about who never heard that loudspeaker that uh, it just drops down like straight down below 50 hertz and then you really don't have any bass response below that and even if you heard it then you will still notice it that if you want to play material that is like deep bass heavy or have subsonic material it's not going to happen however uh, those material which which just have just uh, regular music instruments to it that are playing in the region where the human hearing has tonal acuity then for that you have extreme efficiency for all of the range and uh, so one more thing to explain uh, how I set up this demo today is that I'm showing all of these graphs at uh, 20 watts power input so we see the SPLs there that's happening when we use a 20 watt input power and I'm using that 20 watt input power uh, to show you cone excursion numbers because cone excursion is also a very critical part of the equation for choosing the right port tuning because it is uh, the uh, factor it is one of the factors that limits your low frequency response and uh, always when we are talking nowadays i mean not we just <laughs> when you read about uh, the limitation the low and limitation of loudspeakers they mention that how much power it can take uh, before the voice call melts but there's another limitation which in almost every case comes before melting your voice call your of your woofer is the cone excursion limit wow what a wind and and for cone excursion let's just click on that we can choose cone excursion and here we go uh, so the red line shows the limit so this is the x max limit what we are seeing is the frequency range there like going from 5 hertz 10 hertz 20 hertz 50 100 one kilohertz and so on so basically we are decreasing the frequency and that's the cone excursion in millimeters going up 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 now the red line shows 4.6 millimeters which is the uh, x max for the 515c woofer so it means that x max is the number that tells you that when the cone moves that much then the voice coil is still within the gap 
so it's not leaving the magnetic gap. So if the cone excursion goes above that line, that means that now your loudspeaker is not uh, getting optimal control. So now the more you go out of this range, like here, the more you are losing control over the cone because the, uh, the voice coil is going out more and more away from the magnetic gap. So, so the, the motor itself can not exert control over your cone. And, uh, and when you look at cone excursion figures for uh, drivers, for woofers especially, it's not just what is the uh, possible cone excursion for that driver, but really what is critical is what is the cone excursion within the voice uh, voice coil gap. So basic, I mean within the magnetic gap. So when the voice coil stays within the magnetic gap, because when it leaves, so when it's in there, it means you are getting high fidelity because your driver is doing what the amplifier is telling it. But when you leave that zone, then the amplifier is losing control over the cone. And it doesn't matter if it's a servo-controlled woofer. Because even the servo itself can affect control over the cone when it's in the, uh, in the gap, in the magnetic gap. When it's leaving the magnetic gap, uh, the servo tries to yank it back, but uh, it, 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 it doesn't have enough strength to do it. So, whatever loudspeaker you are using, whatever driver technology, it's critical that once you leave the uh, XMAX uh, range of your uh, driver, then that's not high fidelity anymore. So, it doesn't matter if your uh, subwoofer uh, driver is rated to have a uh, three centimeters of available uh, movement range if the uh, voice coil is in, an, in the magnetic gap only for one centimeter of, out of the three centimeters. That basically it means that you have a woofer that is capable within that narrow limited range and then the extra is just, uh, just for fun but not high fidelity. So what we are observing here is that at these high frequencies there is basic virtually no cone excursion. The cone doesn't move down to 500 Hz. And below 500 Hz we start to see the cone uh, needing to travel more and more to have the same sound pressure level, to maintain the same sound pressure. And, uh, and as you see, that road is getting higher and higher up to this point, which is around uh, 65 hertz or so. And then the cone excursion is dropping. Oh, what's happening here? Why is it dropping? And it's dropping because this is the point where the port is opening up. And when the port opens up, then it means that for those frequencies, the port is... Uh, working so that's where the port has output if you go above that the port has a negligible contribution to the overall sound yet it still has high enough contribution to create uh, resonances and artifacts to color the sound so that's why it's really critical to do the design uh, do the port design properly so that you do not have those nasties creeping up to your uh, mid-range basically and just keep them out of the sound however the good thing with the port is as, as it's opening up now uh, the port can interface your driver to the air much better than the cone trying to interface to the air directly. So what does that mean? So this means that uh, here's your loudspeaker cone in your cabinet and when it's moving out back and forth, back and forth, it's pushing air at you. 
and when it's pushing air it can give the energy that the amplifier sends it to the air with very high efficiency up to this point up to 500 hertz and below 500 hertz the the cone movement increases not just because the lower frequency requires longer road to travel but mainly because the cone loses the ability to transmit those low frequencies and how do you know that this is true that's because when uh, you use a port the port is basically a converter device that helps to match the acoustic impedance of your driver to the impedance of the free air in your room and look at how good an effect the port has that uh, we had that mounting cone excursion and then the cone excursion drastically drops where, where the port is open so even though we have a much lower frequency here but we need only a fraction of the uh, cone excursion to achieve that low response and now when we travel lower than that the port is closing down and as the port closes down then the cone takes over again and as you see this exponential increase in cone excursion is continuing because the driver has less and less ability to transfer energy to your room at lower and lower frequencies and if you just imagine that there is no if there would be no port and then this line would be a, a, a continuous line like that you see just imagine that that that's what we would observe if there would be no port and but with the port there's a dip but then it will catch up again so now let's see what would happen if we would do something very drastic uh, to tune that port instead of 50 hertz let's tune it to let's say 18 hertz slightly below 20 hertz can it be done well i think i was the first <laughs> to try it out to tune a 515c to below 20 hertz and see what happens so actually this is how my voice of the lancelot works and and you see uh the as we drop in the frequencies the here uh it's exactly the same response and now without the port helping there you see the driver has to work more and more in this region which is the uh here we have the mid base here we have the basically the deep base the the top of the deep base um so in these regions now the driver has to work much much more but here at 30 hertz the port is opening and then we see a drastic decrease in the workload of the driver so so basically we see that around 18 hertz the cone has really negligible movement look at that one millimeter cone excursion for 18 hertz at 20 watt power input that's just totally insane right guys we are going to the subsonic region and the driver is putting out energy without with barely moving at all and then afterwards as the port is uh, closing then you will see that the excursion starts to increase again and again and again and by around 8 hertz or so it catches up with the excursion of a higher tuned port and you see here uh, because now our port is opening later you see that if if there is no port in these frequencies then basically you have a straight line so without a port without any ports we would see this line happening and depending on where we tune the port uh, let's say if we tune it to 40 hertz let's add that line here with red you see then the uh, port is opening there let's add 30 hertz as well with green and you see 
that basically this tendency is, is uh, happening. You have that curve without port, that would be the cone excursion. And by tuning the, the port to specific frequencies uh, around that window where the port is tuned, the cone, how much your cone has to work is negligible. So one way to tell where your port is tuned when you have a loudspeaker for your own is that um, when you see the cone moving and, and you think you, you would suspect that where it moves the most, that's where your port is tuned, right? That's, that's where your uh, base is strongest, but not at all. That's where your base is, uh, is at its worst. And uh, when your cone moves the least amount in the base with the ported speaker, that's where it uh, has the best. It offers the best that it can. So let's just clean it up. And now let's look at the... Uh, what shall we look at it? Apparent load power. So basically, when your amplifier sees your loudspeaker, that how much that it provides a certain amount of power so now we are providing 20 watts for the loudspeaker and then we see 20 watts here so out of those 20 watts how much are those speakers are those drivers actually using up and you see here it's, it's in the high range it's dropping a lot because of the crossover so the crossover is cutting off the driver so there's not much happening but here, around like uh, up to like uh, 260 hertz or so, that's where we are using like 15 watts out of the 20. And as we go lower in frequency, we use less and less power. And this is because the, these frequencies we want to reproduce, the wavelength of those frequencies are becoming longer and longer than the size of the driver. So basically, your driver loses the ability to transmit energy at those frequencies. So that's why your amplifier is seeing a massive power drop. And, and let's just have a look now only at the case of the 50 Hz tuning. And you see that here we have like most of the energy being used between like a 500 Hz and 100 Hz region, right? So basically we get the upper base and, and lower mid range. And then for the uh, mid base, it's just uh, using very, very little power. And, and for the lower end of the mid base and, and deep base, as the port is opening up, then your uh, loudspeaker can use a lot of the power of the amplifier to transmit that transmit it to the air and now as the port is closing down then uh, it the driver your loudspeaker can only absorb very little of the power from the amplifier and then it starts to absorb more and more because we are reaching to the area where we need that immense cone excursion for the ultra low frequencies however by this time the uh, SPL output uh, where are we? Why isn't it showing? It's not showing. Okay. So, so by this time, even though the power uh, used is going up, but we do not have enough SPS. So even though, let's get back here. Where were we? We were here. Even though we are using up a lot of power and we loading our amplifier, we, not, we are not hearing any very deep bass, any subsonic frequencies because uh, the output is not there anymore. However, what we will succeed in doing, so if we dump power from the amplifier at the subsonic range into a voice of the theater speaker, is that we will blow the cone. Because look at that. When we, this is the X-Max at 4.6 millimeter around the 11, 12, 12 millimeters or so, that's the safety limit, that's the X Mac, the mechanical excursion limit. And if we push beyond that, then we risk damaging the woofer. 
and if you operate your loudspeaker that you are in this range a lot of the time then sooner or later with just a little you are varying the uh, suspension a lot and you will just you need to just push it a little bit and you will blow the cone and you need a replacement for the driver and uh, and for those of you who have been using these uh, loudspeakers the reason why those cones blew is not because you are uh, listening to too much material of around uh, uh, 50 hertz or maybe 30 hertz but when you try to push subsonic material through the loudspeaker then it will just blow the uh, cone right away so now let's have a look what happens uh, when you tune it the way i tuned it tuning to 18 hertz so here the cone excursion uh, stays well under x max for the entire uh, deep bass and even like top of the subsonic range we are below x max at 20 watt uh, power and uh, and what happens is that when we go what is here around 10 hertz 10.4 hertz that's where we are reaching 11.5 uh, millimeter cone excursion above that so if if i want to uh, provide it uh, subsonic material at uh, at 20 watt input below 10 hertz then i'm reaching i'm i'm in the danger of destroying my loudspeakers and why am i using 20 watt well because my amps that i'm using with them are 20 watt rated and that's something that's uh, pretty easy for everyone to achieve to have like a 20 watt uh, output uh, high quality amplifier and as you can see that will allow you to have uh, to go down to basically to 10 hertz so a useful range is like down to 10 hertz with these voice of the Lancelot speakers. So we will continue from here. That was the introduction. So please like, subscribe and tune in for the next episode. Bye bye.